so today we wanted to talk about soul aspects. For instance, Merlin and Saint Germain are two aspects of the same soul. So we thought we'd talk about that today. And we both trends channel. Welcome to 5D Channels and Chats with Rachel Chamness. As a shamanic channel and mentor, I'll be sharing wisdom and healing from higher dimensions through channeling beings of light. You will also hear liquid Reiki shamanic sound healing, channels between intuitives, and discussion on higher dimensional healing and channeling. You'll find links and more in the show notes, so be sure to check them. You can find me at soundwaveseal.com and my Facebook group, 5D Daily Spiritual Healers in Higher Dimensions. Welcome, everybody. Today, I'm here with April Lindewald, who you probably know already in the group, 5D Daily, in Tag, on my YouTube page, everywhere. Nice to have you on today, April. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited about today's program. I think it'll be fun. So today, what we wanted to do was talk about soul aspects. So, for instance, Merlin, who... April always channels and who's amazing, both of you together. And Saint Germain are two aspects of the same soul. And I have been channeling Saint Germain a lot lately because he came through for my Higher Realm Activations, which is my new show on EtherealTV.net. And so I've been talking to him a lot and he was telling me all the different souls that are part of his soul. And I thought that was really interesting. So I, we wanted to know more, like, what does that mean? So we thought we'd talk about that today. So we thought we'd both trans channel. Did so, you say that, mm-hmm. that Serapis Bay also is an aspect? Is so gonna... he did tell me once, and that was, now I recorded the St. Germain episode three times. Something happened every single time <laughs> until the third one. So we finally got the show. But in the first or second time, he told me he was Merlin. He was Serapis Bay, and he told me something else, but we can ask him again. But he said Serapis, which I think he didn't say Bay, but I believe I that's, that's what he means. Usually, the short yeah. form of, and and that's that was news to me, and it was fascinating because that's another one of the ascended masters I've always been drawn to, and of course, duh, you know, like of course you are, yeah. So for those of you who don't know that I have Tag Lightworkers membership is a monthly group and each month we connect to new guides and we connect to their healing, whatever their grids or whatever they're bringing through. And we have a channel meditation and attunement to them and their concepts. And then we have many sessions all week with people like April and Candace and people that you've seen in 5D Daily who are amazing tag team. We have an amazing certified group of mediums and healers. And so there's so much to it. There's way more than that. We have channeling classes live. We have all kinds of fun stuff. So it's a great place for advanced or beginner light workers. So this month is about St. Germain. We have St. Germain and we have Father Time. July is about that. We're so we have, a good transition, I think. <laughs> yeah, we have St. Germain coming in, working with the high heart chakra, the inner child healing, and then also Father Time coming in to help us with timelines, reconstruction, timelines and helping us with foresight, like it all comes together. You can see it on my site, but anyway, super fun. St. Germain is the topic. I figured this would be a good one for today. It looks like Merlin's all ready to come through. So let's ask him. Hello, hello, once again. It is wonderful to be here with you. And I am laughing because this is a question that has been on everyone's mind for quite a while, ever since we discussed the fact that St. Germain and I are one and the same, basically, but not entirely. And what is an aspect and how does that work? And uh, does that include the possibility that some of you are aspects of ascended masters and others as well? And this is a very interesting question and something which you don't really see or understand so much in your three dimensional world, because you have flesh and blood bodies that are very, very dense and not as fluid as ours in our light bodies or in our higher dimensional selves. And so I will try to do a brief a brief answer explanation in order to leave time for my other half to speak his piece. But the initial, you in your culture are obsessed sometimes with the idea of cloning. I have heard people say things like, I wish I had a clone of myself so that I could accomplish all the things I wish to accomplish. There are just not as many hours in the day as I wish to do the things I want to. And yes, of course, I live in a place where there is no time and so there should be no limits. But on the other hand, there's also much to accomplish in the cosmos. And there are many specialties and many tasks and many overseeing positions, which 
as a even an ascended master or a being in a higher dimension be, is always growing and expanding and saint germain who is the initial impulse behind this collective of beings that we are speaking of today saint germain was was the keeper of the violet flame in the rainbow colored assortment of colored energies which you are aware of and so for many eons, he was the keeper of the seventh and violet flame, but he also had an, an opportunity to come to earth for hundreds of years and be in flesh and blood and explore what it was like to be human. And as he has grown and accepted more responsibilities from source, he is responsible for America. He is responsible for many parts of the ascension of this planet. He is responsible for so many things. And you would think, you would imagine that was a, a very large basket full of tasks. And it was not long into his existence as a soul and growing and expanding that he wished to cordon off. It is not like a clone because you can imagine a clone is the exact same DNA and there is no such thing as an exact duplicate of yourself, however, because the minute it, it has an, a life of its own, it has a new experience and new influences on it, which will change it and which will uh, make it a different being. And so you have, in some sense, the same DNA as the original being. And by DNA, I'm expanding this to mean the makeup, the frequency, the frequency recipe for the being. But it is influenced and changed by its own experience and its own life and its own tasks and its own specialties and its own preferences, which it develops just much, much as a baby will, baby anything. And so I am one of the first of St. Germain's aspects, which is a, a decision to cordon off a part of one's energy or copy sort of Xerox or photostat one's energy, but to give it a specific task or a purpose or a particular part of the responsibilities and nature of that being and send it off to do its work. And as it does that, it evolves into a, an entirely separate being, but one which is always linked back and closely related and much bonded to the original. And so I have been also for eons in existence, as are some of the other aspects of Saint Germain and all of the other major original ascended masters, original high vibrational beings that came from source have other aspects of themselves as well. And here is the funny part, and I will end with that. I have also created aspects of myself souls which are bonded to me and came from the same initial material as me and sent them out to do their work in different places and this channel happens to be one so you could say that she is an aspect of me or an aspect of all of us but on a several steps removed from the original being and certainly more of a portion of the energies that exist in lord saint germain and I will hand this over now to your wonderful guide, Rachel, to continue the narrative. Wow, that was amazing. So cool. That was, that was really interesting. Okay, so what should we ask St. Germain? Just the same, the same so question? From the other side, if it, if it meshes, because I okay. don't always know if I'm, the words I'm using are proper, you know. Yeah, it's always good to have more channels because then you can get different ways of saying the same thing because of the way we take in information sometimes distorts the message too. Yes, it is true. I have had many aspects of myself, not only on earth, but on many other places as well. And the question I hear, yes, I am also connected to Serapis Bay. This is also another aspect of me. And yes, also, oh, this is Rachel. He's trying to give me this word and I don't get it. Heroldian? Herodian? Her Herodias, maybe. Oh, I can't get it. Oh, darn it. Shoot. I don't know. Well, anyway, maybe it's not one that we know. Let me ask him. It is Herodian, and you may not know me by this name at all. And that is okay. I am just telling you, there are many aspects of me that have been on earth. Some you have known very well, and some you have known very little. I have come in different aspects to understand the human plight. I have come as what you would call important people or masters, and I have come as regular beings as well, regular humans. 
I've come as a farmer. I've come as a midwife. I've come as many to truly understand the generations. And it is all part of the soul to learn in this way. And it is important to do so because you need all of this input to understand yourself in all these different ways. For that is what we all are. For I am an aspect of higher beings as well, such as source. <laughs> I am an aspect of source. You are an aspect of source. You may be an aspect of me. You may be an aspect of Yeshua. You may be an aspect of other goddesses as you know them are beings. There are many aspects and we are all connected. This is what you would call your soul group. And these beings, you will know them as your spirit guides. You will know them as other parts of you. It is true that the, your spirit guides are other parts of you. Yes, it is true for you are aspects of each other. Even if you have an angel, an archangel, or other high beings of light, these are all parts of you. For everyone on earth is important. Every one of you is from source. Even those you consider evil or negative or destructive. These are other parts of source. Come here to learn what it's like to live this kind of negative, in your view, life. For it is all for a purpose. We need both light and dark for a third and fourth dimensional reality, which is what you're here to experience. So we are all parts of that. He's telling me he was Harry Truman. <laughs> Whoa. Harry Hilarion Truman. is what Hilarion. Is it, okay. Is it Hilarion? It yeah, is. Master okay. Hilarion is definitely okay. an ascended master. And That's what you're saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is fascinating stuff. Merlin wants to go again. Can he go yes, again? Please, okay. please. Wait. He, he's like bouncing off of what was said by St. Germain. Yes, this is very exciting. I enjoy so much sharing this wisdom. And I would like to add that all of this information is something that it is time for you all to begin to understand because it is useful for you to know on whose frequency you vibrate as you choose your path and as you choose your teachers and as you choose the information you consume and as you choose the work which resonates most clearly with your talents and your preferences because the who you are a step down aspect of will help you to dictate your gifts and talents and the frequency on which you resonate so that you know who to turn to for guidance and for knowing who you are and where you should fit into the giant tapestry that is this experiment. That is what is important about finding this out now. And so knowing this, this person, knowing there is always being a connection with me and I have a connection with St. Germain and we all also have a connection with some of these other people. And it is all because the original source material, the original soul material has been, so to speak, Xeroxed. But in each case, it's only a portion of the material, but it is all as in DNA, all any cell you take from your body, for example, will contain the same DNA that is for the entire being. And in this way, in the light and cosmic frequencies of things and sound, the any one being has all of the potential original source material of the first. Connie has a question from 5D Daily Facebook group. She says, I wonder if RJ Spina is an aspect of Merlin. I don't know who that is, but maybe Merlin can tell us. We believe this is, yes, an aspect of myself, an author, perhaps. Uh, yes, I believe this is an author and practitioner who is also on the spectrum of our soul family. Okay, very cool. There are those with whom I have elected to work regularly in different ways. I, I am accessible to them because we are connected on the same frequency. And the more the person is aware and is spending time with me and working with me, the closer relationship we, uh, we can have and the more I recognize them individually. I will also say, however, that I do channel through others on this planet who are not of an aspect of myself. 
I am an ascended master. I have many things to accomplish and many types of people to work through. And so just because a person is channeling myself or bringing me forward on occasion, it does not necessarily mean that they're also an aspect, although there are many. Thank you for the question. That was great. This is really fascinating. <laughs> All right. So Jill has a question from 5D Daily Facebook group. Also, what's the best way to help the planet ascend? So I'll ask that question. Okay. It is a very good question and a question that has been asked many times. What's the best way to help the planet ascend? Actually, it's always to work on yourself. And to work on your own ascension, work through your hardships, your trauma, your shadow work, as you call it, and to come out the other side more enlightened, more deeply connected to your soul, more connected to your spirit guides and the higher realms so that you can help others as well. And the more that you can work on yourself, the more that you can help others, even just by showing your journey by being it and others seeing this side of you and how you've grown can inspire them as well and so it's always to work on yourself that's beautiful and yeah. so aligned with every time we ask that question we get that answer to go back to the self yeah can, can we <laughs> jump in again marlon wants to jump in again He's okay yes a hug. <laughs> no we love, love it. that question too okay I, yes, I have been listening and I'm fascinated by the dialogue. I wish to, you knew, you know me by now that I love to make parables or pictures in ways that you may understand things that are otherwise out of your understanding. But I will say to you, if you can imagine that if there is a part of your city, for example, which has d d slunk into darkness and bad behavior, a seedy side of town where people are enjoying immediate uh, gratification with things that are not with with things that are harmful or perhaps a lot of dark energy there are people in your world who will go to that place simply because it is fa it is exciting it is exciting to participate in these particular activities it is fun it is it is partying it is it is something that they do for the experience which may or may not be harmful to them in the long term but eventually there may be a group of people who look at that neighborhood and say this neighborhood could be raised to a different level and be salvaged and be appropriate for other kinds of people to move in and maybe they go to the neighborhood and they purchase properties and they fix up the properties and they they paint they invite good people to come in and establish roots and they clean up all the mess and they they get rid of all the harmful things and soon the neighborhood is shining well i tell you this parable because it is something about the soul's journey there have been many souls who come to earth over the eons just to experience the density of 3d and to enjoy it to learn from it to expand their experience level and some of them come to experience sensory pleasures and some of them take that to a great they take it further than they should perhaps and damage themselves in the process or have a, a negative experience or cause harm to others and have to go back and redo that. But they come mostly for their own self growth and their own desire for experience. And now we have this ascension process in, in process. The ascension of the earth is in process. There are many beings who are now more mature, more elevated, higher vibration, who would like to come down to the seedy neighborhood, so to speak, less for their own experience, less for their own gratification, but more to take the paint and the boards and the, the new ideas and lift up that neighborhood. And that is earth. And you are among the group of people who are coming not for your own, although you will have growth and you will have experience, but it is not for this reason that you come now. You come now to be part of a movement to raise this neighborhood to a new place where everyone in the cosmos will enjoy it on a different level, on a higher vibration. And so thank you for doing this. It is time. And thank you for the sacrifices you make and sometimes the very hard slogs you have to go through in order to get past the dark parts and in order to lift them up. 
we thank you. We are by your side. We are helping you as much as we can. But we wish for you to understand why you are here. And that is your mission is to be, you have your experience and to shine your own light, to, to get all of the, the, the stuff out of the way in your own being so you can shine your light as brightly as possible and be part of the group that lifts the vibration for this planet. I will withdraw now. That was amazing. I'm getting lots of hearts in the group. What a beautiful oh, message. Good. Yeah, that was so great. Well, I think that really does explain the soul aspects that we came here to talk about. But before we go, I'd love it if you tell everyone a little bit about what it feels like when you channel Merlin. I think it's really interesting for people to understand what it feels like to be a trans channel. I talk about it a lot, but I'd love to hear what it feels like from your perspective. I'm sure it's an individual experience for everyone. And there are still people out there who do full body channels where they are absent. You know, they're walking around just being some other being. Uh, I'm not doing that. And I do think over the years, it's become easier and easier and easier and easier to allow somebody else to work through you. And for me, it's becoming easier and easier and easier the more I do it. The, the, right. the quicker I can come in. And I see you do that too, that you can come in and out and just have them there. Boom. It feels to me like I am summoning a special energy, a certain energy. Sometimes I try to link it to a, a physical smell or a touch or something that I associate with Merlin. And I just let it, I just trust. There's a huge amount of trust because yeah, you just so go, much. okay, risk. open your mouth, <laughs> let him, let him talk. Does he show you things? Like, does he give you extra? Yeah. He thought he, and he does things like I told you that I'm sort of, I'm due to come on for a Merlin program tomorrow, for example. And lot, most of the time he doesn't tell me what we're going to talk about. Sometimes I say, I want you to stay on topic for the month. And sometimes he's like, no, I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> what happens is I don't know sometimes, or I don't take the time to sit with him. And at the last minute, like the night before or the two nights before, I'll say, please tell me in my sleep what we're doing. And I'll wake up and he'll be like talking in my head. I'll wake up in the morning and the whole program is like going through my head already. So he's kind of there when he wants to be there. And I feel like he uses my experience, my my knowledge, my pop culture references. You know, he uses them. He uses them to communicate. He grabs them out of my brain and he puts them in his his thing but he shows me pictures lots of times uh especially of atlantis when we do that and or if we're doing a guided meditation i'm seeing the pictures and he also he just loves it he loves to teach he loves intellectual things more than like energetic things more and i feel like i'm just there i'm i'm there and i don't feel like i'm doing anything special and i worry that it's just me talking like some other part <laughs> of my imagination i'm sure all channels do that we all feel that it all it always feels that way it takes it's a lot like, of trust you know what yeah. really changes it when you go back and you watch yourself on tape that's go, why i always tell everyone to watch you go oh my god I, I, I said that you know or i look like that or i i you know right. it, it tells you that you're not just alone it, you're not alone it's not you <laughs> and also to tell people like to do sessions for other people. And then you get that feedback too. Well, yeah. then, you know, you're not making it up. I mean, there, it takes a, a lot of self-trust. I think I could learn to get out of the way a little more. I'll give you a quick example. Cause I know we have to go The the RL Stein, RL Stein, was it anyway, the, whoever asked about that person, RJ Spina, R what? RJ Spina, R -J who, who is an author and healer. She said, well, but I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And the part of me that was still me was terrified. I got that question I and I was like, I don't know who <laughs> that is. How can I answer that question? And I'm, then I was like, just let Merlin answer. He knows. He knows. Yeah, I had that moment too when I was channeling St. Germain and he said he was therapist. And I was like, come on now. That's not right. But I mean, it's right. But I so mean, it's still, right. you know, yeah. you're still there and you're still almost, sometimes you have the capacity to argue with them, you know, or to be like... <laughs> I was really excited because I opened my eyes and it said author and healer. And I was like, that's exactly what Merlin said. So thank God. You know? <laughs> I've gotten yes too, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and I got yes on those Sarpus Bay and all that. So it's, it's nice to, it's nice to do you'll know, you'll have, together. Everybody who does this is going to have some doubts and some moments, you know, but it's, it's really the greatest pleasure of my life now. I it really it. is for me too. And the thing is you either just going to have to trust it or not. I mean, you can't not trust it and do this work. You're just going to have to trust to have courage to be the fool on the tarot card. And <gasps> Oh my God. He wants to talk about that tomorrow. 
He wants to. Oh my God. I just got before I came on here. He said, we're doing the full card tomorrow. I want to show you something just before we go. I, I do have a full card. I don't know if you guys noticed this in my deck. If you have my Fae Oracle deck. Elemental magic and manifestation. Let's see if I can show it. Who is the fool? The, the griffin? Yeah, because look, it's a courage card and he's stepping off the yeah. So oh, that's magnificent. Yeah, that was my that was the intention of that. <laughs> Thank oh. you. So thank you so much for coming. That was really fun. I've gotten this concept a few times. Like one time I got it from Archangel Ariel, and it was in a class that I was teaching, a trans channeling class, and it was so amazing. And I want, and I, tr I recorded it. I tried to turn it into a blog for years and I just couldn't get it out there. So and this is wonderful that we have finally, I finally gotten this information out a little bit more. And, and there's a lot of different angles and more information from before. So that that's just great. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on. I and can't believe we both could be St. Germain and Merlin in the same room. Oh. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Well, everyone, you know, you can find April at Be The Wizard on Facebook. You can find her on our tag team page. You can find her on my scheduling to schedule with her. Like uh, you can find her everywhere. You can send us messages if you want to have a session with her and Merlin. She does that as well. And she's amazing. So she is also a Soundwaves Heal practitioner. So you can go to soundwaveshill.as.me is my acuity site, but forward slash April. You can also schedule with her. I'm just nothing more awesome than having a session with April and Merlin. And she's been teaching tarot for like 30 years, right? 30 years? Yeah. 40 years? Maybe more. <laughs> and she was my first tarot teacher, my only tarot teacher. And But you sold me my first deck of Oracle cards because it was a class that you taught. I remember. I remember that class. Yeah. And, and the tables have turned. And then Rachel's my teacher in sound healing and Reiki and channeling. Well, we can all learn from each other in this life for sure. So thanks everybody for coming. Bye everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks everybody. This was great fun. Yeah, it was. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. If you are a healer or spiritual entrepreneur, present or future, I'd like to invite you to my Facebook group, 5D Daily Spiritual Healers in Higher Dimensions, where I'll be live for more discussion and questions on Thursdays. I'll put the link in the show notes. I'm Rachel Chamnus at Soundwaves Heal.